I have put in place a zero tolerance policy for illegal entry uh, on our southwest border. If you cross the border unlawfully, then we will prosecute you. It's that simple. From the start, it was clear that the Trump administration wanted to divide rather than unite. In Trump's America, there would always be an enemy to punch at, one that he alone could stop. Build that wall, build that wall, build that wall, build that wall. And Mexico will pay for the wall. It's been hard to watch. If you are smuggling a child, then we will prosecute you. And that child may be separated from you as required by law. I always felt like someone needs to stand up to the bully. Someone needs to fight for the underdog. That's why I went down that first time to see for myself what was happening to these children I had heard about. I'm here right now trying to find out exactly what's going inside on inside this building. My team contacted this program and they contacted the Office of Refugee Resettlement and said that Senator Berkeley, that's me, was going to be here and would like to go inside and see what's going on. And they said no. I decided to come out here and go up to the door and explain why I'm here and ask to be let in. We did reach a program manager who said that they don't let people come and see what's going on, even members of Congress. Please just got here. Okay. Well, that's that's okay. I'll, I'll talk to him. Can I begin? I'm sorry, Senator? Senator Jeff Merkley. Jeff, U.S. Senator Jeff Merkley. Merkley. The press had no idea what was going on in these facilities, and until this visit, neither did we. Senator Jeff Merkley making national headlines after he had police called on him while demanding a tour of a federal immigration Senator center in Jeff Texas. Jeff Merkley, who saw there, went to an immigrant detention center in an old Walmart that's been decommissioned in Brownsville, Texas, to try to understand why the Trump administration is ripping immigrant children from their parents at the border. An increasing number, as you know, uh, and have been reporting on, uh, are being separated from their parents because of the zero tolerance policy from the Trump administration. Senator Jeff Merkley, I have no doubt that we would not be getting this report tonight from Jacob Soboroff if you had not gone there first and stage that protest, uh, the only United States senator to do that. When our trips to the border shined a light on the shocking practice of ripping children from their parents' arms, the American people were horrified too, and rightly so. Thanks to public pressure and court action, the Trump administration ended child separations. Americans from all walks of life stood up and rejected their actions because snatching kids from their parents' arms is not who we are as a nation. If only the story stopped there. Once family separations ended, the administration started, instead, locking up families together in internment camps. And out in the Texas desert, at Tornillo, they built a huge tent prison for kids where there was little regulation or oversight. The government was still using child trauma as a deterrent, and Evans suggested that they were looking to do more of it. Last summer, I went to Texas for answers about family separations. In December, I went back for answers on family internment. The first night of our trip, we learned of the devastating news that a seven-year-old girl from Guatemala had died in Border Patrol custody. I wanted to get her story out to as many people as I could. Well, when I heard it last night, it was just, it's, it's shocking. And it's a, a reflection of the horrific circumstances in which families are traveling to the U.S. It's tragic and awful, and it should make us think about the fact that right now, the United States is locking up 14,000 children in a series of child prisons across America. And they're virtually out of sight and out of the news. And we need to get to the bottom of, of uh, how the U.S. Is, is treating children. On the journey to the family internment centers in Dilly and Carnes City, Texas, an expert, Dr. Scott Allen, an official whistleblower inside the DHS, briefed us about what the administration is doing that is making things worse inside these facilities, not better. There has been a systematic dehumanization of these people from the top of government, and this is, I know, something you're already quite adept at pushing back against. At every stop, experts and workers talked about the Trump administration making things harder, not just exacerbating existing challenges, but creating new ones and manufacturing a crisis, hurting vulnerable people for political gain. Here, because we're very 
very, very concerned about the way that families are treated and how children are treated as they await asylum hearings. resources to be able to interview That's folks. Right. Yeah, they're choosing not to have the resources or to simply claim they don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. right? That's correct. It's really hard to get behind the numbers that they give us yeah. about anything mm -hmm. and the explanations they give us for just about anything. It, I, I think what is clear at the end of the day is that it's a systematic uh, attempt across every element of border policy to restrict or deny, outright deny access to the asylum system. As we approached the Tornillo tent city, it became apparent how important it was for us to be there. Congress has an obligation to conduct oversight. This place was built to be a temporary shelter. People were supposed to live there only for a few days. Some of these kids had been there for months. We were told by our health and human service handlers that we weren't allowed to talk to the kids. We couldn't ask them how they were being treated or what they thought about their circumstances. It's so important that American people know that we now have a system of child prisons with 15,000 kids. They are unnecessary. It's part of a strategy, a political strategy. That means it's coming from a very dark and evil place. It's not America. Let's shut this place down. At Tornillo, the full scope of the administration's actions were crystal clear. They were manufacturing an emergency, warehousing children in a tent prison. I have seen a lot of pictures of these tents um, over the, the last six months and how the camp is laid out. I've also seen a lot of pictures of the kids watch, walking in single file with guards in front and guards behind. I think that um, still to see it in person, that piece is really strikes you. I mean, because that, that says, oh, this is a prison camp. The administration is pursuing every strategy to lock up children for long periods of, of time. And so hopefully by the time I uh, land in D.C. on Monday, uh, we'll have a letter crafted to the FBI, at least a first draft of it, and, and, uh, and be pursuing it aggressively. We have to shut down Pernia, and we need to shut down the system of now a whole string of child prisons housing, at this moment, 15,000 children across America. We have a lot of work to do together. Stay tuned. We need you to be involved. We need you to educate others, and we need you to push on your members of Congress. Thanks so much. New documents surfaced sent from a government whistleblower to Senator Jeff Merkley. Those papers list a draft of immigration, quote, policy options, some of which were ultimately implemented and others even more severe and shocking that were contemplated but not implemented, like expediting the deportation of children without their parents. Joining me now is Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon, who has made exhaustive efforts to bring the administration's child po separation policy to light from the start. Senator, what have you learned from these documents about the nature of the policy they followed and what they contemplated. Well, what these documents show, Chris, is that there was extensive planning to implement a strategy of criminalizing families crossing the border. At the same time, the administration said it's all about criminals. Uh, they were plotting to stop families from arriving. I want to the... be clear about this because it drove me absolutely nuts covering this story. Time and time again, the White House and Kirsten Nielsen got up and said, you are out of your mind, no policy exists. And what you're saying is this document is literally a policy document in which one of the policies they contemplate and ultimately implement is child separation. The very first uh, policy on that list, uh, the document, uh, is the one of criminalizing crossing the border. And the, the second is to separate children from their parents.